Howdy folks, welcome back to Super Hamster Plays Kingdom Death Monster. Uh, in this episode, we'll be painting up the starting survivors that we assembled in the last one, and the enormous lion. If you haven't seen uh, my video about the assemb basic assembly of these guys, uh, check out series or episode 3, I think it is, of the series so far. Uh, the first two were an unboxing, so... Hopefully, once we get these guys painted up, we can actually play a game. Uh, as ever, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button on this video. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Right, so we have our four survivors and we have our line. We'll put the line to one side for the moment. Uh, the four survivors I've assembled so far, I've sprayed white off camera. Uh, I've done a base coat on all the flesh in uh, a pretty basic uh, skin tone and I've gone over with a bit of a pale wash on I think it was no, I think it's the new version of Space Wolf Grey but I can't remember what that's called it's something like Lupus Grey or something um, but the intention is these guys are going to have fairly basic skin tones and these I'm going to bring up several layers until we get them to more or less white uh, the bases at this point I'm thinking I'm probably just going to paint black uh, but we might do something a bit different, perhaps paint on some paving slabs or something. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, so first thing I want to do is get a wash of uh, Seraphin Sepia. I don't like the... There's a lot of skin tone washes and flesh washes and things around, and I think they're all too dark, um, and I'm too lazy to dilute them all, so that's what I use for doing my flesh so I'm just going to get cracking on that um, and I'm not sure whether I'll speed that up or whether I'll just cut but basically it's just going to be taking it straight out of this pot and applying it not too generously but I'm not going to be um, stingy with it uh, yeah so just applying a bit of a light one over all of the skin areas there we go. first one was a little too light just to give it some depth if you can see how well that's picking up but yeah I'll take some photos on uh, some still photos at the same time and uh, yeah, we'll edit it all together afterwards so I'm going to carry on doing these and uh, so yeah we'll either have a speedy uppy bit or uh, a quick cut see you in a bit Yeah, so as you can see, that's just a, a fairly basic wash of inks. It's a bit rough around the edges. Uh, it's sort of smudged, some of it's smudged over onto um, the sheet, the loincloth, whatever you want to call it, the toga. But yeah, that's that's where that is. So whilst that's drying, I'm um, thinking my white line, I'm going to go with a base coat of bone white to start with. And... Uh, see where that goes um, this particular one I'm using is game color um, everything else I've got on the table I've got these three that are game, co game color everything else here is Citadel but I've got some P3 I've got some Vallejo I've got some army painter I use all sorts um, this is the world's worst wet palette that I've just started trying to use and I'm not really sure how it's going um, so really I'm just using this as a palette because it's kind of an experiment anyway but yeah there you go and this looks to be quite thin but that's kind of the point because it's almost a wash um, I mean as you can see I'm using a huge brush here that's that's quite messed up and I just want to get some some paint on the model pretty quickly. Just make sure it's going in all the crevices, trying to avoid some of the bubbles that I seem to have picked up along the way. Probably should be using distilled water rather than tap water, but yeah. I am many things, but a professional painter or um, a competitive painter isn't one of them. If I can get stuff to a half decent tabletop standard, that's more than good enough for me. And I'm 
distinctly unbothered about what I get all over the base. So if it works, it works. The only reason I haven't already base coated this guy is I honestly had no clue what colour I was going to go with. And it's only when I saw it sat there next to the uh, the colours that I planned on be using for these for their highlight that I, mm, that might work. Yeah, so I'm just going to carry on with this. Uh, let me show you. Just use the audio quality. I've now got a pen or a thing in my mouth. Let me just cut the my one of my lights. And I'm hoping that you can see that, okay, compared to the uh, the white that I haven't painted yet and the bone white that I have. Still working uh, with my camera, trying to work out the best settings. So. Expect the quality to go up and down for a bit till I get something I'm happy with. But this is actually the first time I've ever painted anything in front of a camera, or behind a camera. It's, there's the front of the camera, and I'm back here. Back there. As you can tell, because that's where my arms are attached, and I'm, you know, human-shaped. Um, but yeah, so I'm not really sure on the, finding the balance between enough light that I can actually see and not so much light that the camera goes over the top. And I'm just sure I haven't. Which that seems about right in focus there. Just have to remember to hold it there, not there. I've tried the autofocus on this camera, but it it's it's designed for uh, well, it's, it's an over-the-top webcam, to be honest. Um, so it's very much designed to focus on people. Consequently, it focuses on my hands and not the thing in my hands, which is why on this video I'm trying the manual. And being a natural creature, I'm not even that bothered if it's an even coat because it's not supposed to look painted. So having different patches of slightly paler or slightly dark isn't actually a bad thing. Plus, you know, base coat, several layers of paint to go on over after this. Sorry, gotta get used to painting in front of the lens, not in front of my eyes, so um incidentally, as I say this is the first time I've painted in front of a camera. Is this a sensible position? Uh so you got, if I come forward a bit, there you go, that's right above my head. So I'm trying to get as close to sort of eye level as I can, but let me know in the comments if uh, you prefer a, you know, perhaps coming in from the side over here, but lower down or even higher up or, or what. But I think this is a pretty good pitch, uh, position. And unfortunately at the moment I can't afford to buy a second camera to do you know, camera in camera. Which would be nice to have a sort of zoomed in section, but it's a while away yet. I'll give you one painting tip. As I say, this comes with the caveat that I'm not a professional in any way, shape or form. Uh, I am not a painting competition winner. I'm not a tournament winner. I haven't entered a painting competition in about 20 years. And even then it was more a case of, well, I was there playing the games anyway. I might as well enter the competition. And I won by default because I was the only person that actually entered that competition small local tournament um but yeah one one tip for you is 
when switching off your spotlight or your floodlight that's just over your head here to uh, get a better contrast on the miniature to show people don't look into the light just before you switch it off okay just putting that out there okay the uh, washes and the base coat on the line are almost dry uh, but while I'm I don't want to start on the skin just yet so I thought I'm gonna pick out the uh, the lanterns and and the uh, the stone on the survivors so I'm gonna take a small amount of adaptus battle gray which is quite a deep gray tiny bit of water and that thick all oh, that paint is way too thick mm, no I think that's about right this one I will not be using this huge brush I can use a much smaller brush with a much smaller pot which that does not have yeah that should do this is a size zero brush, but I don't really have any hard and fast rules. I tend to just gravitate towards which of my brushes I haven't ruined at the time. Obviously there, I've got to be a little more careful to go around fingers and the like. I'm going to be careful on distinguishing what is a finger and what's a crease in the rock. Which is part of the reason I did the uh, the wash, the flesh wash first, because it will darken up all the creases and you can actually see the detail a lot better. I know some people like to start with a black uh, undercoat and work out for similar reasons. I tend to work with a light undercoat, either white or sometimes grey, depending on what colour I'm going for. Um, and then work out, and that's just a preference thing. I tend to use a lot of washes, which means I can get away with it, because they tend to flow into the lower sides, near the recesses and things, anyway. So. Now, I am going to do the lantern in grey, and not in metallic and I'm going for a sort of old gnarly um, cast iron look which is typically sort of mottled and near black so I'm going to start with grey and go with several washes of black to tone it down I actually find it easier to paint black from the highlight down than I do from start from black and then add the highlights over the top. Unless I'm going for jet black. But jet black doesn't tend to exist much in the world. So, grey it is. And that's not a finger. That is... Piece of lantern. Yeah, so that'll do. And I'm not sure what colour I'm going to go with his beard. Um, 
or his hair. Part of the reason I wanted uh, to get into painting Kingdom Death is to challenge myself because one of my biggest weak points is painting flesh and skin tones and things and there's an awful lot of those in Kingdom Death. Spotted a tiny sprue mark on the bottom of the lantern that I hadn't cleaned up properly. Must have missed it. Fortunately, it's on the bottom of the lantern and it's grey plastic that I'm painting grey, so it's not going to be the best coverage, but you really can't see it up there. But you could see the little bit sticking out the bottom. And I think this wash is almost dry but not quite some of the deeper recesses are still there and that's the dark gray done so we'll come back to our line while they set set um dry i'm thinking i want to take this down just a smidge in all the recesses and then bring it back up so we'll start with uh, some of the bone white we started with before. And oh, do, 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 do. I don't want to go too red. Go browns or a dark yellow maybe. Yeah, it does. That might work. Ah, uh, that's just. Avalon Sunset, which is quite a mustardy yellow. I think I'm not going to need a huge amount, but I'm probably going to need some. So let's see what we come up with. should work. I think I want to go proper thin. And with this one I'm thinking I'm just going to stick with this big brush because again I'm just I'm going to be fairly uh, fairly liberal. I start with this one and then I buff it out with um, let's try something I've not done in a while in the recesses. It's like reverse dry brushing. It doesn't always work. In fact most miniatures it doesn't work but there's so much muscle structure with this P 
particular model. But I'm thinking I can get away with it. Again, not being too, uh, well, not being remotely precise with where it's going, because I'm wiping most of it off anyway. Not sure on that one. I'm also not really bothering with the um, his mane or the fur at the end of his tail at this point because I'm going to do those even darker but more brown. Yeah, that should work. And so I go over with a large dry brush of uh, the original bone and then maybe even some highlights. Or even lighter colours. That should work quite nicely. Okay, so I just noticed off camera that I hadn't done the, uh, the face on the lion, so just done him as well and we'll be back now to the skin on the survivors um, this is uh, model colors basic skin tone which is not a million miles away from the bone white that we used on the line it's it's a little more yellow um, so I'm thinking for the highlights on the skin that's the way I'm gonna go uh, it's also the colour that I started with the skin, so I figure it'll work quite nicely. Different brush this time, it's got slightly stiffer uh, bristles and it comes to more of a sort of chisel point than a point point. bit of wood. Just to thin that out a little bit. And I'm almost going to be dry brushing but not quite. So. So yeah. Almost dry brushing but there's slightly more paint on than you would probably use with your typical dry brush. But yeah, I'm trying to go down wherever possible because that way the highlights will be on the top. starting to think looking at this guy that I'm going to go with blonde quite dark blonde but blonde because he's got something of a Thor look going to him but who knows it's going to be some time before I get onto his beard and face and hair so maybe I'll change my mind again what's life without whimsy
Next step. Uh, I went, just went back over and touched up some of the grey uh, where I was dry brushing and stuff. And I'm going to take a black wash and just be quite level over the grey. I think in total I'm probably going to need two or three washes on these just to get the tone about right. Certainly on the lantern. Uh, I'm less bothered about the rock as I figure that's going to be fairly pale anyway. It's definitely going to be grey as opposed to black. So. But to pick out some of the darker spots and get some shadow in sort of where the hand meets the uh, meets the rock wouldn't be a bad thing. The rock will probably only need the one. And the lantern's definitely going to need a second, which is part of the reason we're doing this now. So I, that can dry while uh, I get cracking on the next spot of the lion. to be a bit more careful with these washes than the ones I was applying to the skin and so forth because uh, if the bristles on uh, this brush are fairly stiff so it holds its shape better and if I catch the wrong part it'll flick kind of like a toothbrush and I'll end up with black spots over the skin or the pale bits which obviously I don't want because I've got those to pretty much the colour I want them so a tiny bit more on the rock or the piece of stone face as I think it is in the, the background a lion's mane Earthshade or brown, as most people call it. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but we'll give it a go. Actually, I'm quite liking that. That works. got to be careful not to overload it or it'll just flood to the bottom and I there's quite a lot of uh, being hair there's quite a lot of crevices and crannies and texture um, in the main which works really well for washes and it's probably going to take a couple of coats but It's working for me, so we'll carry on with that. I don't know if uh, the camera is going to pick it up, but I got some of the, uh, the shade on the inside of this leg, and um, rather than trying to paint over it essentially I'm just going to water it down so much that you can't see it that it's not doing anything and then soak it up another advantage of washes when you're painting with such a thin layer of colour if you don't like it you can just rub it out with water
obviously yeah I'm going to paint the inside of his mouth red tone it down but if I do that then it'll give me some pre-shading and I'll be able to see what I'm doing when I get there I think the top's almost dry so I'm going to move that again just to try and even out the colour a little bit crevices on his paws. I'll apply some underneath the base just so I can sort of see the detail when I'm looking late. It's nothing huge, just enough to distinguish the individual toes and emphasize how long they are. Because the feet on this model are not paws. They are Definitely hands and feet. It's one of the slightly twisted things about this world of kingdom death over others. He's not actually far from. Oh, pardon me. He's not actually that far from, uh, from being done. A few highlights, a few splashes of colour, pick out the teeth and the claws. Go back and do the tail, the fur on the tail, which I missed. Which brings us back to these guys, and specifically the robes. Well, I found the, the color I'd used, Fenrisian Grey, which I think is what Games Workshop are now calling uh, Space Wolf Grey, so it's slightly blue, it's a little colder um, than dull. You know, grey's dull, pink's warm, blue is cold, and it's in that sort of blue end of things. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to start with some of that over here, then I'll apply some white over here, and somewhere in the middle is where we'll meet up. Back to the brush I was using almost as a dry brush. Now, the thing I don't want to do here is come at the brush down. I want to come in at an angle so it's only going to pick out the lighter areas in theory. That's better. I, say, I think I've walloped that with my head at some point. this I want to leave all but the uh, extreme shadows because there's going to be another coat over the top of this which is going lighter and then another coat over that going even lighter still but for the most part I'm just letting the texture of the model do the work for me change of pace I want to paint the inside of this guy's mouth yeah. I'm going to go with Mercurite bread right. 
which is closer to a sort of burgundy colour. I'm going to try and get it all around the base of the teeth, into the gums, and then when I pick the teeth out in a sort of bone red, uh, bone white I should say, not bone red, um, it should just leave just a hint of the red in the recesses to make it look like he's got gums, and I may well then go over it with some blood for the blood god. Um, I honestly have no idea what that stuff is. If it's, I mean, it, it is essentially a paint, but it's translucent, um, and it looks wet when it dries. So it's kind of a weird combination of, yeah, it looks like you've got blood all over it. So it kind of does what it says on tin, really. But there you go. But yeah, I might do some over there the raised paw, some dribbling down his uh, down his face. after I varnish it so that it stays glossy looking like he's had a fresh kill that's got it and those few minutes have given these robes a chance to dry so we'll go back to our other brush go with a slightly paler colour almost white It's the wrong brush. That's the brush I wanted. And once again, just sweeping in the direction of the material and letting the texture do the work for me as I said at the start of the, uh, the video I'm not a pro painter I'm just going with a half decent tabletop standard highlight in almost pure white but for that I'll, I need this to be completely dry and a steadier hand that I've got now Honestly, I'm not sure he's going to need it. Okay, I'm fairly happy with the way the robes have turned out. So now I'm looking at hair to pretty much finish these off. Um, and I'm going to go with a blonde, two brunettes, and a purple, which I'm actually going to put a lot of black wash on and take it quite dark so the purple will come through as kind of a highlight. Uh, the brown 
I'll do one with a brown wash to make it a definite brown, and one I'm going to do with black wash to try and um, turn it almost black or a much darker brown. So that's the plan. Again, I can be fairly loose here because I know I'm going over it with a wash afterwards, which will hide all the uh, the recesses that I miss. And just generally break it up and being hair it's a natural thing anyway so it doesn't need to be uniform one of the things I did earlier that you may not have picked up on is when I was doing the the skin wash um, I went over the hair as well knowing that I was going to paint over it but it means when you get to this stage you can see it a bit better Particularly with things like facial hair that tend to be quite small anyway. Yeah, one thing I'm not sure about with this this hair is whether the best wash is going to be the brown one or the sapia one. So what I'll do in a minute is uh, get a scrap of cardboard or something um, and just paint a couple of patches of this yellow in order to uh, wash over with the different colours afterwards and see which actually looks better that worked pretty well and the last survivor purple part of the reason for doing this rather than just going with black is these are quite monotone um, miniatures there's not many sort of breakout areas that draw your eye in it's lots of skin and in my case lots of almost white cloth so doing something like grey hair would just be another tone of grey on top of grey on top of beige on top of beige so I thought if I do this, then uh, yeah, it'll stand out a bit more and give the eye something else to look at. Well, that is pretty much it for the survivors. Um, I've got the shading to do on the hair. I've got another coat of black ink to go over on the lanterns. I might pick out a few more highlights, bits and pieces. I've got to work out what to do with the base. The lion's not far off as well. Um, I think I might do some highlights in the uh, in the fur, but I've got to wait for that very much to dry. And I'm going to have to go around and pick out the teeth on his uh, on his mouth. And again, I'll have to do something with his base. But for the vast majority of, uh, of the, these are done. So I'll finish them up off camera and I'll take some pictures once they're done for the end of the video. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Hope you found it useful. Um, if nothing else, it can prove that pretty much anyone can paint just takes a, a bit of a steady hand, a bit of practice, a few simple techniques that you just get with practice. Um, as I say, I am not a tournament painter. I am not a professional painter by any stretch. But I think these will look considerably better than if they were just the plain plastic. So uh, give it a go. If you found it helpful, 
don't forget to hit the thumbs up button leave a comment uh, regarding the position of the camera Ooh, the camera Ooh. yeah uh, if you think it would be better in a different slightly different position don't forget to drop a note I'll give it a go see how it works maybe have a think about it and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hopefully in the next episode we'll get cracking on the first game of the campaign super hamster out thanks for watching bye for now